Good morning, class. Good morning, Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School's the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. We're so glad that you're joining us today. And uh, it's God's will that every day be an overcoming victory day. He didn't say that there had never been any challenges, that there would never been any issues. You know, how can you be an overcomer unless there was something to come over? Yeah. Right? So there will be challenges, but uh, it's not God's will that we be beat down, that we be defeated, or that we be robbed. So uh, let's join together in faith again today in prayer and believe for the things that will feed our spirit just like we confessed and build us up so that instead of being overcome by things, we overcome everything that comes against us to his glory as a testimony. Amen. Yeah. Father, all of us rejoice today in you that we know you that you have chosen us and you have saved us and made us your own. And we rejoice to know that your plan is a good plan and a victory plan, that we're overcomers. We ask for utterance and eyes and ears and hearts that can hear and receive. We ask for exactly that fresh manna from heaven, the very thing you know we need the most right now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> if you would turn in our great textbook, the Bible, to the book of Psalms in Psalm 23, and we're actually beginning today a new series. And the title of the series is Faith for Provision. Faith for Provision. You know, uh, faith works the same in every area, but faith must be fed in each area. Uh, you know, feeding on the word on uh, water baptism won't necessarily give you faith for provision. Or, you know, even feeding on the word for healing will give you faith for healing, but that's not the same as faith for all your bills to be paid our faith to, to come out of debt. And so our faith, uh, even though it's the same faith, it's God measure of the God kind of faith, and it works the same, yet it must be fed in each area. And so we're going to, you know, we, uh, back uh, a number of uh, lessons ago, we were on faith for healing. And then we talked about overcoming unbelief. We just finished that series. And so there there are other aspects that we've already covered, and, and uh, there's hundreds of messages available if you go to faithschool.org. It won't cost you anything. There's no charge. And they're also in different languages. And so if you have friends or relatives that English is not their first language, well, uh, it may be there that they could watch and feed on some of these things. And so just like your, your body needs different nutrition and especially at different times and seasons, if you're uh, lacking in a certain mineral or electrolytes or whatever the case might be, well, you need some extra of that. Well, if we'll follow the leading of the Spirit, He knows what we need, when we need it. And He'll quicken that to us and emphasize that to us. So I want you to uh, brace yourself, get ready right? Yeah. To have a lot of faith for provision. Yeah. Can you say amen? amen? And you know, and not just for yourself, amen. for people around about you. Amen. amen. Being able to help other people that their faith might be weak in that area and the Lord could use you to help them till their faith gets built up. Uh, just like perhaps you've been helped yourself in, in times past. So uh, we're beginning in Psalm 23. This is a familiar psalm to many. 
And there's a reason why some of these things are familiar. Or we've heard it more. That's because the Lord has emphasized it to us and caused it to come up many times. And so we need to see why that is. In verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, that word want is also translated lack. And a lot of other translations say it that way. In fact, I'm going to read a couple of them in just a bit. But you could say it that way. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. And, of course, this, is, uh, this, this psalm is painting a picture of a shepherd and the shepherd's sheep. And how the shepherd is leading and feeding, guiding, directing, protecting and taking care of the sheep. Who's the sheep in this scenario? You are, if you're a child of God. I am. Who's the shepherd? The good shepherd, the good Lord, our Lord. Notice he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. You know, if you're a sheep... And it's the middle of the day, and you're lying down in the pasture, it's because your belly is full. Amen. Elsewise, you'd be up, <laughs> milling around, looking for something else to eat. But this is a picture of abundant provision. You've eaten so much grass, you can't take any more right now. And you're just laid out, and the grass is waving over your head, and you're napping and enjoying life. Huh? You're a blessed sheep because you got a good shepherd. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Not waters I'm going to get in trouble in. Waters as a sheep I'm going to drown in. And not, uh, not turbulent waters. Not contaminated, uh, yucky, muddy waters. But clear, nice, still waters. He restores my soul. Does this sound good to anybody? He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In this life, you'll go through some uh, challenging places. And it's because the earth is filled with curse, with death, with unbelievers, with all kind of junk and all kind of manner of things that's not the will of God. But if we'll follow the Lord and stay close to Him, He will lead us through it. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Out the other side, protected and kept and safe and victorious. Somebody say, He leads me. He leads me. He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Can you see He's still talking about provision? Right? He was talking about you got plenty of grass, you got plenty of water, you got protection, and here he's back to provision again. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, the presence of problems doesn't in and of itself prevent you from victory and from rejoicing. Hallelujah. Right in the presence of the problem, you can have abundant provision. Is it true? And you know, another side of this, you don't wait till everything's perfect to start enjoying life. Right? Or you'll be procrastinating indefinitely. Hmm? And you don't say, well, well there's, the enemy's trying to do something. Well, he's always trying to do something. Right? Don't let that preoccupy you to the point that you don't realize there's a table right in front of you with plenty of provision, right? Yeah, but the enemy, yeah, but the enemy. What about it? He's been here before you got here. He's always yapping about something, right? Ignore him and focus on the abundant provision. Hallelujah. Somebody say he prepares a table. For me, before me, even in the presence of my enemies. What does that mean? It doesn't make any difference what they're saying, what they're doing. 
it, it won't keep me from being well provided for. It won't keep me from receiving good things. It won't keep me and you from being satisfied and, and being full. He said, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Now see, one reason I'm talking, we're talking about faith for provision. Can you see practically every verse of this has something to do with that? You got all the grass you can eat. You got all the good water you can drink. You got a table before you. And my cup is what? Not partly full. Not half full. Not even full to the brim. My cup what? Runneth over. over. That is excess. That is surplus. That is overflow. That's all you need. And then some. Right? Yes. Is that God? Yes. Is, that, is that our good shepherd? Yes. Is, is our good shepherd the kind of shepherd who won't give you just barely enough grass to keep you alive? Huh? Yes. He won't give you, you know, fill your cup with just the bare minimum to help you subsist. But he will run your cup over. Somebody say, my cup, my cup. runs over. Then he says, surely, now this is, this is not, uh, this is unequivocally, this is not uh, maybe so, we hope so, we'll see, surely, surely goodness and mercy will follow me, sometimes that word trans- translated accompany me, it'll be with me, all the days of my life. What kind of life is this? I'll barely get by, rake by, scrape by, don't know if you're going to make it through next week. No, goodness is with me. Abundance is with me. Provision is with me. My cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Does that sound like a well-provided life? All the days of your life, and in even that's not the end of it, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Reckon there's everything you ever wanted in the house of the Lord. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Child of God, you got it made. Is that right? I said you got it made. Abundant provision here, goodness and mercy with you every step of the way, cup running over in this life, in this life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And at the end of this life, you're just getting started. Then you really take off dwelling, living in the goodness of God in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, does that stir you up at least a little bit? So what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, faith for provision and um, what I want to do over the next, you know, several lessons and, and, and weeks, and we'll see how long it, it takes as long as it takes. We're in no rush around here. So we want you to keep coming back and, and, and building one on another. But we're going to go through the Word and look at a number of things. I want to give you 30 reasons why we are sure it's God's will for us to have abundant provision in this life all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Well, what does that mean? Uh, You heard it, then you heard it again from another, then you heard it again from another, and at some point, you should become convinced and go, well, that's the way it is. (laughs) Right? Right? That's how it is, you know, and different witnesses in the scripture would be like we saw it in Matthew, we saw it in the book of Acts, we saw it in the book of James, we saw it in Exodus, we saw it in Psalms, right? Peter, John, James, uh, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jesus, and after a while you ought to go, that's how it is, right? Right? That's how it is. Allow yourself to be fully 
persuaded, not by my thinking or your thinking or somebody else's ideas, but by it is written. Can you say amen, class? Do you think this is a good endeavor? Is this, is this worthwhile? And if you think, well, I, I already believe that, well, not like you're going to believe it by the time we get through. There's always room to, to become stronger in faith and to get more settled. And I know there's a lot of folks hearing this for the first time, too. And many times, uh, even believers have things they need to get rid of and things they need to overcome, even things they learned in church that are absolutely wrong. Now, one thing you got to do is let the Word of God be first place in your life. Elsewise, the truth will not make you free. Um, I know when I first uh, uh, went to Bible school, I was only there for uh, a, a few weeks, and I was learning a lot of good things and hearing a lot of good things and excited about it. And, and one day the Lord spoke to my heart. I, I don't mean I heard an audible voice, but very distinctly inside me, I understood that the Lord was saying to me, Keith, everything that you realize you believe, find it in the Word of God. Find it. Well, that requires a certain amount of discipline that every time something comes up, because you'll hear people saying, well, now I just believe it's like this. And a lot of times when they throw that word just in there, I just believe it's not based on anything. They just decided to believe it. So they say, well, what's wrong with that? I got a right to my beliefs. You got a right to your beliefs. Actually, you don't. If you're a child of God, you're not, you're not supposed to make up beliefs. You're supposed to believe what he said to you. And so I realized what the Lord was saying to me. Anytime I, I realize that I believe something, I'm to ask myself, okay, where is that? Where is it in the Word? And so for month after month that that happened, I'd, I'd, I'd hear something or I'd think something, and the, the Holy Spirit would remind me, will you believe that? And I'm like, yeah. Well, what's the next thing? Where is it at? Where is it at? And so sometimes I'd just make a note because I couldn't search for it right then. But then later on, I'd go look for it and I'd get my concordance down. And back then, we didn't have the electronic concordances. It was the book that was this big, you know. And so uh, I'd be looking through there. And uh, sometimes I'd find scriptures and go, well, yeah, yeah, that's right. But then sometimes I'd search and search. And I couldn't find one scripture that said anything like that. But then I found some that contradicted it. Now I got a choice to make. Right? Do I cling to my unscriptural belief? Or do I turn loose of it and say, well, no, I can't hold on to that because it's not in the Word. And the Word contradicts it. Now I assure you, if you've been around for any length of time, you got some ideas that are not God. You've heard some things and believe some things and think some things you didn't get from God. And just because it's religious doesn't mean it's God. And even if there's part of a scripture that people associate with it, did you know the enemy quotes scriptures? Remember that? He quoted scriptures to Jesus. So in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the Bible said, rightly divide the word of truth. How do you rightly divide scripture? With other scriptures. And so if something really is the will of God, something really is uh, a truth in the word of God, you'll find it all through the scriptures. You'll find it confirmed multiple, multiple times. So our question is, is it God's will? For us to have provision, all of us to have provision, abundant provision, all the time. Is it? Well, uh, I like your answer here, but what's it based on? See what I'm saying? You, because everything you believe in this life, at some point, it'll be challenged. 
And you, you'll have to uh, see, am I standing on solid rock or shifting sand? What's this based on? And so it's not enough to just say, yeah, yeah, I, I think that's right. I think that's right. No, no. You want to clear out all of the goofy thinking, all of the theories, all the supposition, and get to the solid bedrock, it is written. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away, but this will not pass away. This will always be true, it'll always be right. Now this is an area that you'll find the enemy opposes you in. And you'll find a lot of Christians will want to argue with you and fuss with you about this. There are a whole lot of people, you know, they'll say, oh, yeah, God's a good God. He's a good God. But then, you know, a few hours later, they'll turn around and say, maybe it's his will for you to suffer lack. Maybe it was his plan for you to lose your house and, and you know, lose your car, lose your job. And, and maybe it was his plan, you know, uh, you wind up on the street, but you, you learned some hard lessons, but you got close to God. And people have all kind of twisted ideas about things and think they're smart. But what is that based on? Do you find that in the Word? Where is it at? No, if you'll spend some time in the Word, you'll find out plenty is good. Amen. Lack is bad. Hmm? Never is plenty and abundance bad. And never is lack good. Never. Somebody says, well, yeah, but you know, it could be a blessing in disguise. God's not trying to fool us. God's not trying to confuse us. A blessing is a blessing. It's always a blessing. It's never a curse. It's not a, you know, a curse is not a blessing in disguise. Certainly a blessing couldn't be a curse in disguise. This is thing, these are things from the enemy trying to confuse and convolute things. Do not let yourself get pulled into that. Make yourself be disciplined. To take everything back to the book. Well, when we start talking about how do we know that it's God's will for all of us to have abundant provision. How do we know? Here's reason number one. The Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say the Lord, the Lord is, is my good shepherd. Hallelujah. Go with me to the book of John. Well, I, I tell you what, no, excuse me, on your way, stop by Psalm 34. It's just right there close by. Psalm 34. Psalm 34 and uh, verse 4. All of this is really good, but for time's sake, we'll start at verse 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And delivered me from how many? All. All my fears. Would that include fears of running out? Yes. Fears of not having enough? Yes. Well, if not, it wouldn't be all. They looked to him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and said, I'm sorry, but it's my will that you learn some things through this poverty. You won't find that in the Word. That's, that's religious notions that men have come up with. And I don't care how many initials they've got at the end of their name or how long they went to school. If it's not Bible, it's not Bible. And if it's things men made up, don't let it confuse you. No, the poor man cried and the Lord heard him and did what? Saved him out of what? All his troubles. Would that include your financial troubles? Yeah. All your troubles. Delivered you from all your fears. Saved you from all your troubles. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a good shepherd. Yeah. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is what? No. no want to them that fear him. See, that's that same idea of the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not lack. There is no want to them that fear him. See, there, there are, there's no parenthesis after this. The, you know, there's no want to them that fear him except those mysterious times when he puts you through poverty to, to teach you a spiritual. No, no, that, that's men have made this up. Men trying to explain things they don't understand. And you got to, you got to decide now what you believe, whether it is written or somebody made it up. He said, there's no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord, what? Shall. shall not want any good thing. Is this the word of God? Yes, it is. Has the Lord changed? No. Will he ever change? No. Is this his will? Yes. No lack, no want to those that fear him used to be God's will. It did. It was. But is it still his will? Will it always be his will? He never changes. And he never will. Said out loud, the Lord, the Lord is, my is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not lack. I fear the Lord. I believe in the Lord. I reverence him. I follow him. And there is no want to those that fear him. I shall not want, I shall not lack any good thing. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, our time's up today, but aren't you glad that it is written and it is true and the truth makes you free? Say it out loud like we do sometimes. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome this world by faith. I am strong in faith, giving glory to God. Well, we're just getting started in this, so come back tomorrow and let's go further. We'll see you soon here in Faith School. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.